Hello and welcome back to the garage. Today I'm going to talk to you about a job I'm doing, machine job I'm doing. Um, I figured I haven't done a full machining episode, so I've got a job in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through the full thing and film the whole process start to finish. So if you remember when I got the Corvair tuned. It went to a guy called Daz. He owns DC Hot Rod and Race in Middlesbrough, um, about 15 minutes away from me. And he came over to look at the Corvair while he, while I was getting it tuned. I got it, I got it back and I had some issues, so he came over. Um, and he noticed I had the few, I had a few machines kicking. Basically, he's a, he's a Volkswagen more but Volkswagen air cooled specialist so he builds he's had like a drag team a drag team he's had a drag car with like a fully built boxer beetle engine in it um done loads of like research and development on making as much power as you can with a beetle engine and he's currently rebuilding his daughter's race car which is a drag beetle and he wanted some machining work doing on the heads so a few months ago he gave me a set of heads to try out to see if I could do it so basically the start off without the start off totally straight so there's usually there's this step see that step there this originally had that and it was a little bit higher so what I did was put it in the machine ran the bar down and I ran the bar flat so took about 0.5 off this face and 0.5 off that diameter just to see that I, if I could fixture the job up and do a proper cut on that size so with this engine or these heads what he wants is this this ring he wants that to be taken down, so we measured it at his shop. This the ring is proud or two inch, so uh, he wants that taken so that it's level with this face, and then he wants this face taken down twenty thou as well. So in total, you're looking at four, uh, you're looking at a mil off this entire bar depth. What we're going to do? We're going to put it in the miller, fixture it to the bed, get get the um, zero the bed out, zero the job out to the axis bring an indicator in, indicate this bar get it bang in the middle of that bar put my adjustable boring head in or my auto feed boring head bring it out to well take it down so it touches that face and then auto feed the boring head out till it gets rid of this lip so basically till it meets this face and then um, what we'll do is we'll bring the bar back in go down 0.5 or 20 thou and bring it out again to bring that out to deck to drop the the overall height of that bar by a total of from this from this edge here a total of 40 thou so that's the plan um, like I say, I've already done them, so I've got a rough idea of where I'm splodging, I have a good idea of fixturing, stuff like that, so it shouldn't be too bad. This, I was asking him actually while I was down there, this is a really nice finish he's got on these heads. So he's had them aqua blasted by, aqua blasting UK, he's in Stockton I think, which is just near me. Yeah, Stockton on Tees. So, as you can see, he does a lot of, uh, well, it says here, use Aqua Blasting UK for your restoration works, high quality surface finishes on components such as engine parts, cylinder heads, blocks, carbs, wheels, mountain brackets, crankshafts, plus all types of covers. So, we'll definitely be um, giving these guys a message because there's a lot of parts off the off my BMW engine uh, that's going in the E28 there's a lot of stuff on here I want doing 
So I'll probably get the sump done because it, it cleaned up all right, but I'd rather have it like that sort of finish because it looks beautiful. Um, there isn't anything else on the engine, but I want to get the alternator bracket done, the alternator, the alternator itself done, um, stuff like that. So yeah, that'll be. That's just a side note. But if anybody else is looking for um, like aqua blasted aluminium parts, these boys definitely look like they know what they're doing because they, like I say, these are beautiful. Look at that. So yeah, we'll get this set up on the mill and I'll walk you through the process. Right, so <clears throat> I didn't film the first one because I wanted to basically prove out my uh, my system for getting these done. So as you can see, we've got like a nice, really nice finish actually. Um, 40 thou deeper than it was, so I'm happy with how they came out. So now I'll show you on the second one the setup. So we have two of these rather nice clamps that I got. Two of these rather nice clamps that I got um, with the Miller. They are what make are they? Lensky. Um, really clever. Like they they have this adjusts so you can get like more reach out of this. Um, they're just fixed in, they've got like a T-nut on the bottom of them and then you just tighten it down with this and it clamps the job. So I have one of them either side gripping on this face and then I have this one just at the top just for a bit of extra insurance I suppose. Um, it could probably get away with not having this one on but the safer the better really so yeah we'll start getting this bar clocked in National 40 taper um, collet chuck, so I need to get one of those. If you can't tell, it's absolutely freezing in here. My hands feel like they're going to stick to this metal. I think it's one degrees outside. Twenty twenty one is the year I get a decent shot. So I just thought I'd show you the setup for clocking the jobs in. I've got this Mitoyo um, really really fine um, indicator. It's just one of the. Uh, it's got the little. Thing on the bottom that you can move in and out. The camera isn't focusing at all. Um, yep, yeah, that's it. Mitotoyo. This is a arm off of an indicator uh, magnetic stand. So I've got this in the drill collet and then it goes into the spindle and then you basically sweep the bar in like that. Yeah, basically what I do, I go from one side to the other side, so opposites, and then spin it to 90 degrees to the other edges of the hole, get this equal to that 
get this side equal to that side on the gauge um, and then you, you're definitely somewhere near especially with this little little fine uh, fine indicator so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this out put the boring head back in and um, start getting ready to make a cut so I think I've talked about this boring bar on the channel before but it's basically a, you can't really see it on the camera it is a wok law reporter if I can I think that's what that says I'm really not sure made in Germany um, I don't know if you can see that either probably not it says one division so one little line on this collar is not point point not 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 five of an inch across the diameter so that's what one division is and one revolution in the feed mode anyway is 0 0.04 so 40 thou um, it's a really good tool basically what happens is you turn the turn the spindle on when the spindle's on there's this lever that goes into the top collar see how that spins and as that spins this spins the opposite direction so what happens is there's a mechanism inside here that engages when this is held still and it basically pushes this half of the bar out or in depending which way you're going um, you can obviously run this both ways if you just reverse your spindle and reverse your cutter but um, yeah at first it took me a while to get used to how to use it um, I couldn't really work it out at first but after a few YouTube videos I got the hang of it um, so I'll show you how it works so as you might be able to tell I have touched off with the cutter on that face I've now zeroed the um, Heidenheim digital readout so now all I have to do put it into low box turn the spindle on and if I just catch that like that see how the bars fading outwards probably just to say tell so as long as I'm holding this lever that bar will feed outwards as it's spinning you can see it's actually cutting the uh, shoulder off now there is a stop set on the boring bar so once it gets to the, the desired outside di diameter the uh, mechanism will lock and it won't work anymore the bar will stop feeding out let me put the course now a little bit more there it is so you just let go Turn the spindle off and you've gone as far as you want to go. So now I will wind the bar back in, drop the bed or lift the bed um, 20 thou which is about 0.5 mil um, and do, an, do another pass. So if I turn that dial lift the bed point 
0.5 or near enough. So that's my that's my now. That should equate to a mil off this depth, but obviously I'll measure it once the uh, once this cut's done. If I have to make an adjustment and take a little bit more off, then I can. Um, so yeah, we'll do a full. This will skim the full face instead of just taking that very outer lip off. So this one should look a bit more interesting. There you have it. So I've measured it with my depth gauge. So I just locate that on there like that and then you push that lever down and then what I do is I cross reference that depth gauge with my vernier. Um, quickly demonstrate. So the way I measure these depths is if you can see some sticking out, sit that in there, locate the long flat on the body of the depth gauge on the flat of the head, push this down into the bar, tighten up the set screw to hold it in place, then take a vernier Using that, this this is a is a depth. This is a depth measurement. So when that's closed, that's obviously zero. So this gives you a nice flat. You've got a nice flat surface there to indicate it on. So you put that flat up against your depth gauge, the body of your depth gauge. Then you bring your vernier in to touch, and it should have been 14 mil which it is. So I've got a 14, 13.75, 14 and a 13.75 for some reason. I don't know why. That's just the depth that was a, that was one mil deeper than, than the factory than the sizes from before. So yeah that's these finished up. Here's the finished articles. <clears throat> Surface finishes came out nice. Happy with all the sizes. Um, so yeah, all in all, successful job. So now I can drop Daz a message, tell him that his his heads are ready, and I think he was talking about getting these done over the Christmas break. So it's now Boxing Day. Um, I just came in on Boxing Day and got these finished and a bit more on the 28 as well. Hope you all had an amazing Christmas day. Um, this video should go up in between Christmas and New Year, so all the best for next year. Hopefully 2021 is a bit less chaotic and we, are, we can all get out more and get to shows and everything isn't so up in the air next year. Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, from me, all the best. Hope you have a good New Year's. Thanks for watching, folks, and I will see you in 2021.